Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new edition of the Triple Trio, our weekly look at all things world racing through a Hong Kong lens and we do it with the best in the business, the great form analyst in Clint Hutchison and the Hall of Fame jockey in Shane Dye. I'll start with you. Hello Hutch. Yes, good. Hi there Rich. We're really looking forward to the weekend. What a week of racing we've had. It's that time of year where all the good horses are stepping out in Australia and Hong Kong. They're starting to creep out as well. So plenty to discuss and, and look forward to this weekend again. And Shane, it is Caulfield Cup week uh, this week, so your name tends to be thrown <laughs> around this time of year. Just ridiculous, it always will. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I couldn't give a damn. Like, oh my God, it's just that ridiculous. <laughs> we love you, we know that, mate. Uh, hopefully, did you find some winners during the week? Not on Wednesday. I had uh, two bets Wednesday night and lost. It wasn't an easy night with the wet track and it rained all night, so I had a pretty quiet night. Wednesday night, uh, once it was raining. Well, let's check out the highlights from last week. Enjoy. Joe, who do you consider the horse to beat in the race? I think there's quite a I, few. It's not clear cut outside of your two. And I, I, I don't know. I just can't get past the, the, the top. When I say the top three, my two horses, and and I wish I win. I, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe I'm. I mean, I'm not a form student. I might do a bit of form, but I'm a horse trainer, but I just can't get past those three horses. You must think about it. Takes the lead narrowly. Think about it from Cylinder. Private Eye. I wish I win. Think about it in front from I wish I win. Think about it. Think about it on the Everest. Taj Dragon, Joyful Hunter, and um, I really predominantly think it's those two. He's half a length, Taj Dragon, Joyful Hunter can't reach them. Taj Dragon's taken over from Super Winner and Joyful Hunter, and Taj Dragon does it well. What about race number eight? Can you find us a winner? I think I can. Um, I was pretty keen on Lucky Encounter. Lucky Encounter, though, he's promising. He's in front half a length over Greenwich and Beauty Crescent, and Lucky Encounter's going to win it. Lucky Encounter, too good. And Joe Pride, the absolute highlight there. We're tipping us into the trifecta. He got that 100% right. We've got a huge show coming up. All the latest news, of course, our special guest, Star Power guest is Andrea Atzeni. We'll also look at through the whirlpool at World Racing and find you a stack of winners at uh, Sha Tin. But first, let's burst out of the gates. We burst out of the gates with the Everest, which was the highlight. And from a World Pool meeting, uh, it broke all records. It was magnificent, the turnover. And Hutch, Joe Pride summed it up perfectly. Trained first and third and in between was I Wish I Win. It was an epic race. Yeah, epic race. Uh, and it was great to, to get Joe's time and, you know, uh, his insight into the race. And he, like you said, he could not have been more right. This horse looked like he'd land in the right spot. Well executed ride by Sam Clipperton. I don't think I wish I win was held up enough to say that he should have won. I thought he ran well. Private Eye was good. But Shane, you know, think about it. He's just a winner and he keeps winning. Yeah, he's not impressive, but he just, like the run before, he wasn't impressive, but he knows the winning post. What's he won? Nine straight now with Sam on. So all you can do is win. And you got to remember, Octagonal was never impressive, but he just kept winning also. So it was a great race and a great day's racing. What do you think of the whole event, Shane? You watched from afar? Mate, uh, I'm going to tell you something, and this is on my two sons' lives, and people may not believe me, but I don't miss not riding, right? I've watched Golden Slippers, Melbourne Cups, and never once have I said to myself, I wished I was out there riding. Never once since I gave up. On Saturday, I'm watching them sing Sweet Caroline, and for the first time since I stopped riding, what, 12, 13 years ago, I wanted to be there riding. And it hit me and I had a tear in my eye. And it was incredible. It was amazing, this song, and what it did. And I was there thinking, if I had been there and I win this race, what would I do after the race to get that crowd doing going? I would have done something different to what other jockeys didn't do because they were just so electrifying. I said, you've you got to take your hat off to the racing, New South Wales racing. It, it was just magnificent. I mean, the atmosphere, Hutch, um, I know you're busy working, but if you can possibly find it on your schedule uh, as a possibility, I implore you to do it. It is a special event. Yeah, they've done a magnificent job. It's a great day. We love to see you know people having a good time on the racetrack and, 
and enjoying themselves. And we need that next sort of generation coming through, which looks like is exactly what happens at that meeting. So kudos uh, to New South Wales. They've done a fantastic job. But guys, just on the Everest, I think we had a little, you two had a little wager last week. Oh, let's, yeah. Yeah, let's just have a look at some vision from last week. I'll have a little bottle of wine that <laughs> Cylinder defeats uh, Shinzo home, mate, as a three-year-old. Oh, I'll help uh, you drink it. Private eye, I wish I win. Think about it in front. From I wish I win, think about it. You beauty. <laughs> Actually, to be quite truthful, when I watched the replay, I thought Shinzo was one of the best runs, if not the best run in the race. And that's being frank, and that's on my two sons' life. But I'll give you a bottle of wine whenever I am um, with you. Whatever you want, Richo, how's that? Uh, Mate, that sounds perfect. Richo, just hey, go Richo. right right to the top of the list, or maybe the bottom of the list, you know, where you keep going down, <laughs> keep going down. I used to like the Lynch barges from um, France. Anyway, right. Richo, I'll tell you why I was like that watching that race, and it hit me about 10 minutes after, and I thought, why am I like this that I want to be there riding when I'm not like it? I've never experienced or ridden in an Everest where I've won and ridden in Melbourne Cups and Golden Slippers. I've been there, done it. But I missed out on the Everest, so it was a bit of a shame I missed out on that, but it's great for the future of racing. Oh, it's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, and Huey Bowman's brilliant as well, Hutch. Uh, he is humming along, and uh, he was literally putting on a clinic on the weekend. Yeah, no one's riding better than Huey at the moment, and the record says that. Uh, he's just getting winners after winner after winner, and, you know, he got the call up on California Spangle, of course. Um, Tony Cruz reached out to him some weeks ago and you can understand Zach sticking with Beauty Eternal because he's sort of the new kid on the block up against this level but California Spangles been there and done it and uh, lovely uh, perfectly rated ride Shane from Huey and um, you know he just got it right. Got it really right you can see when you're running those sectionals even sectionals and picking up a bit it's very hard to run him down. Like, he, he can break 22, that, that horse, when he gets a soft lead. I was worried about the weight compared to the other horses, but um, it was a great ride, and he was too good on the day. Just for um, uh, watchers as well, Shane, I mean, we talk a lot about weights, and some people take more notice of them than others. Um, in Hong Kong, we're quite, I suppose, acutely aware of weights because it's evenly handicapped, so little, little differences make a, an impact. But... When you get a, slow, a steady run race like that, are you of the belief that the weight becomes less of a factor? Oh, 100%, especially when you're on the leader because you're not working and you're just gradually picking up. And he can carry weight too, Clint, if yep. you go through his record, like he has carried it. So th that's really not a problem. But when you get those light, light weighted horses on the 115s sitting third or fourth or fifth and it's a fast run race, they can always come over top of you. But that didn't happen there because Yui did such a good job at, at rating him. Uh, golden boy. What about Andrea Atzeni is our special guest today. He's riding in good form. He is. He rode a couple of winners. I think everyone's riding pretty well. Look, I reckon three or four years ago, I'd watch the races and just go bad ride, bad ride, bad ride all the time. Now, Clint... I'm not seeing that. Are you? No, definitely not. I think the, you know, they've they've brought in a lot of guys. I, I think the game has been lifted with a number of jockeys, and yeah, it's making uh, making your job ho harder to find the bad ones. Uh, Shane, but that's a good thing. We want we want the horses to have their opportunity, and I definitely think as an overall, the standard has lifted. Yeah, and Harry Bentley, Shane, uh, he was our special guest last series. Uh, very, uh, you know, impressive young man. He's riding well. Yes, he's going good. I think he was indentured in England to Ryan Moore's father, so he had a good upbringing there. Uh, he's very strong in a finish, which is good because these horses are so even, and he lifted this horse over the line. He kind of kicked. The other horse looked as though he had him beat, and he was going to beat him there. Then he switched his stick to the right hand, and his run just ended. But uh, he's very strong in a finish, and it's good to see these other jocks riding doubles. You know, when they don't really get an opportunity to. It's going to be interesting as well going forward, Shane, because, you know, we've got Vincent Ho and, of course, Hugh that are going to be on the sidelines for some time. I mean, Zach's going to end up with the best rides, but it's going to provide an opportunity for a lot of these guys, I suppose, to get that second or third best ride in a race. So there's a few of them there that will want to make hay while the sun is shining and there's going to be a golden opportunity, I think, coming up in the over the next sort of three or four weeks. You're correct, Clint. There's a big opportunity for someone the next month to grab the, the ball by the horns and, and, and really 
lift their career. They're going to get an opportunity with a lot of rides. Uh, Zach can't ride them all. And as you said, um, Vincent's not there. Yui's not there. And um, someone's going to ride a lot of winners very soon. So Pierre Ong uh, with uh, Francis Liu and also uh, uh, Danny Schulm and Casper Found. So it's tied at the top uh, for the trainers. But Hugh leads by two over Zach Pert. Now, Vincent Ho, he's... Uh, Suspension has been reduced from 10, from 10 days down to eight days, but with a $120,000 Hong Kong dollar fine uh, as well added to it. Uh, Romantic Warrior Hutch. Uh, James McDonald provided us with a little bit of vision of a gallop on uh, Sunday morning. So I flew back with uh, J-Mac from Sydney to Melbourne on Saturday night, dropped him off at his uh, airport. He stayed across the road from uh, Mooney Valley, woke up in the morning, Road uh, Romantic Warrior, gave him a spin around, then jumped on, back on the plane and went home. Uh, what did you make of the work? Well, I loved it. Um, but more importantly, what did he say to you, Richo? Well, he said that he needs to keep getting fitter and fitter. And after it, was really, really pleased the level of fitness that uh, he has taken, the level of benefit from that first run. And that's all he needed in uh, in uh, James's opinion. And I think in your opinion as well. Yeah, he needed that. Missing that trial before he went... To Australia, it, it's had a big impact, and um, like all reports, the horse has really improved nicely from that uh, from that sort of first up run, and now that gallop. And I, I got the impression with what James said to the media that he felt that Romantic Warrior Shane went better, um, worked better, and seemed more at home, ironically, around Mooney Valley than he did at Flemington. Yeah, but there's a lot of horses I rode from Sydney that got around Corfe, uh, got around. Um, uh, Mooney Valley, as good as gold, couldn't get around Corfoid or Flemington. It's it's very funny because it's such a good, tight turning track. But as I've said on the show before, he loved Happy Valley, that horse. And Happy Valley's a tight turning up and down track, which is very similar to uh, Mooney Valley, but of course, opposite way. So I've got no doubt he's going to get around there. He just needs the pace on a little bit where he can be running fourth or fifth and not too keen. And normally in Cox Plates, they go along. And this year, Clint, I'm sure you know this. There is a lot of pace in that race. Yeah, he'll. Um, yeah, yeah. We just hope that he can turn up in the vein of form that we know he's capable of. But Richo, by all accounts, um, he's headed in the right direction. Yeah, and there's something special about the valley, isn't it? And maybe it's that velodrome effect, uh, Shane, and the camber on the track that forces the gallopers to get on their right leg, those that are visiting in. So that's why they, they tend to enjoy it. Very different to Caulfield and Flemington. Oh, Richo, you're smarter than I thought you were. You realise there's a camber there. <laughs> is that you've, a just back... gone up a, you've just gone up a notch, mate. Is that a backhanded, <laughs> is that a backhanded compliment? Well, that he didn't a... say where he thought I was originally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, that's very true what you said, mate, because it is very well cambered, um, um, Mooney Valley. And uh, <laughs> horses seem to just get around there as good as gold from Sydney. I've never had a trouble at Mooney Valley on Sydney horses. Seriously, my day has been made. It's all downhill from here. I am on a cloud nine after that compliment. Sweet in defeat <laughs> file now. They're off. And Sugar Sugar missed the start by four lengths. In Dublin Star, Sugar Sugar Fast Buck Smart Leader. Oversubscribe lunges at the post. Missed. Sugar Sugar. That's a sweet win for Alfie Chad. Into the Black Bookers we go, and here on the Triple Trio, it's called the Sweet In Defeat File. The Sid File, Hutch, who jumps in? Yeah, a little tricky this week because we had that wet track on Wednesday, so I didn't want to take too many out of that particular meeting, although I thought Thesis was a much improved run. He's with Frankie Law now, and I thought. That was an eye-catcher during the week. I'll be keeping him safe. And the market was keeping him safe as well on Wednesday. So he'll be an interesting run. Of course, he formally won the Britannia. We'll ask Andrea Atzini about Smart Fighter from the weekend. I thought Super Wind Dragon as well on the turf ran a nice race. Um, but Smart Fighter's only lightly raced. He's got some nice upside. Now, here's Super Wind Dragon. Now, this was the final event at Chartin. Super Wind Dragon was at the bottom of the class. Now, he, Shane, can come back in grade and um, be eligible for a Class 3 dirt race. That's his go. This was a fantastic run, though, I thought, on the turf. Like, he's not far behind them, but there'll be a nice race for him in the not-too-distant future, Super Wind Dragon. And when he goes back to his favourite dirt, he'll be, uh, he'll be hard to beat. Clint, I think he's had 11 unplaced runs on the grass, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong, but it's about 11. He's a dirt horse. You know that. I know that. And he never goes bad on the dirt. His form is 
excellent. So he's a winner waiting to happen on that run once he gets back onto the dirt. So three runners go into the Sweet in Defeat fire. We now move from Sweet in Defeat to Genius or Slaughter. Leander Cross answering the urgings of Shane Dye. Mannerism coming at him. Mannerism has got it. Daring tactics by Shane Dye. He's got octagonal in full flight on the corner. Bold tactics by Shane Dye are going to pay off and he pinches the chipping door. Well, a segment we crudely call Genius or Slaughter, but it's an opportunity for us to uh, pick the brain of the Hall of Fame jockey in the Golden Boy in Shane Dye. And Shane, who caught your eye from a gun riding point of view? Zach last week on Taj Dragon gave it a perfect ride. Um, he waited on the fence. He's in a good posse. As soon as the horse come out third on the fence, come off the fence, Zach had to stay there because there was only two ch other chances in this race, one being um, uh, Jolly Hunter or whatever it is who was back and the leader, Super Winner. So Super Winner was always going to kick, always. He's had three runs this preparation and he kicks. So if you're knowing that, as soon as he comes out here, Zach has to go to the fence because the other horse is going to drop off and he did. He stayed on the inside. He held him up. He'd done no work this week, whereas the start before, he worked early. And he got the run here, and he timed the run right, and it was a perfect ride. And that's how you should ride a horse like that. Clint? It was brilliant. He uh, yeah, kept his momentum going as well, didn't he? He never once uh, overreacted with the reins. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he rode well. He drew a gate. And, um, you know, Shane pointed out, I think, on a previous episode that that's how he sort of thought he should have been ridden. And um, obviously, Zach executed that this time. Not that there were a lot of options, but, you know, it was a, it was a nice ride. It was uh, it was probably the highlight on a, on a tough day there at Chartin, but no, it was a good ride. And Shane, we, we're looking for votes for the idol. We know that we've, we, I mean, this is going to be the most tri treasured prize in world racing, the idol. And Huey okay. has caught your eye. Well, Huey's just riding so well. He's rating them well, whether the forward or back. He's got to get three points. All of his rides were good. And he had a winner on Wednesday night. Um, then the other boys, because um, they rode doubles or three winners, um, Angus Chang rated out gate really well in front. It was a bit like Yui. He went a little bit slow early and then gradually picked up and picked up. And that's what won the race. Um, and um, Hemlin, he never gets an opportunity. And this horse here had no chance, Clint. And I still don't know. Well, I know how he won. His form was terrible. And he drew gate one, but he got him into the right spot. He never gave up on him and he just won. In Australia, of course, he won on a wet track, and that's why he won. But I wanted to give him a point because it was a good ride, and he doesn't get an opportunity. And it just goes to show in Hong Kong, if you don't give up, you can always have that winner when you don't expect it, Clint. Yeah, definitely. Now, most improved, I, I know we spoke a little bit about Angus last week, and we've been talking about how the jockeys are going in general, Shane. But Angus, for mine, this season, he looks a lot better. He, he's riding really well. The record's saying that. I know it's easier to say because he's had the winners, but something's clicked. So uh, it's pace. It's 100% pace. Um, once you work out that you don't have to lead in every race if they're going too fast, like most apprentices or Hong Kong Chinese apprentices were doing, you've got a chance to ride a lot of winners because you've got that big allowance. And if something goes fast, he's now happy to let that horse go and sit second, third, whereas before he wasn't. And it's a big difference. And he's just rating them so well in front. He, he's worked out pace. And that's the biggest thing to win any race. We crudely call them a slaughter, Shane, but they're not necessarily slaughters. Was there one jockey that got it wrong? Yes, I'm trying to help him. It wasn't a slaughter. He gave it every opportunity in his books and public's book, but in my book. This is uh, Wong the Apprentice. He hasn't had many rides. He's on happy uh, packing Hurricane. Now, he gave it a really good ride fourth, but he's a 2,000-metre horse who needs to unwind. And he should have come out three wide when he's on that type of horse and pushed Zach four wide here. But he stayed in. Now, he's following a horse that was always going to stop and is 100 to 1 and ran last, but was always going to. He had to get away from it earlier because he's on a 2,000-metre horse. Now, packing Hurricane wouldn't have won, but... When I'm watching the race, I'm saying to myself, come out three deep now. And he didn't do it. So to me, when I'm watching a race, that was a mistake. And he actually finished back, but he battled on. But that's just trying to help a kid 
realise what horse he's following, what type of horse he's on. He's on a stayer who doesn't stop, he keeps going. And then that race turned into a bit of a sprint home and he got left flat-footed, where if he was out three wide, Clint, going forward, it would have benefited him. Yeah. Just a small thing that can help him. Yeah, he needed to build. He's on a horse that needs to build that momentum. And what yeah. sort of, once he, he, he erred on the side of caution, Zach had him locked away. And a nice win by the winner, actually, Shane. He's... Um, He's a, yeah, he, um, you know, like you said, the tempo wasn't overly strong, so I don't think there was that normal penalty being three deep. But, uh, you know, you don't see too many win first, uh, first up over 1800 as well. So, John Sizey, it was a strange way to get off the board. They were also on uh, Sunday, Clint winning three deep. They yeah. could sit three deep and win. There was quite a few horses that sat midfield three wide. So that wasn't a problem. And if you'd realised that he should have just come out at the half mile and been three deep, ready to go because he's on a stayer and he's not going to quicken that horse. He just goes the same pace. So I hope he learns from that, that you've got to learn what horses you're following and what type of horse you are riding. Let's check in with the leaderboard, Shane, and uh, Huey's on top. Uh, he's, of course, uh, going to spend some time on the sidelines, but at the moment he leads by uh, two, um, and the class is starting to rise to the top. Yeah, well, they ride the most winners, don't they, those three jocks, so they're, they're always in the limelight. Um, but I, I'm, I'm honest here, I think everyone's riding pretty well. Like, I'm not getting many slaughters when I'm watching the races, so it's great for Hong Kong racing, and um, very happy about that, Clint. No, it, look, you like the wager on them, you don't want to have hard luck stories, so I agree, Shane, as we've said, um, no, the boys are riding pretty well. So we, I'll be more than happy if we don't have any... Richo in the slaughter file for a number of weeks. Don't worry about Ab that. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, one jockey I wanted to ask you about, Shane, how you assess the way he's riding, is a guy with a real high profile. I'm at Ramwick today, but uh, here in Sydney, in Britain, of Duller. Um, he hasn't quite hit the board in Hong Kong like many thought he would. How do you assess it? Hasn't clicked. He, um, um, how can I put it? Just, just isn't there yet. He's got to do a few things a bit different. And it, and that's the problem that it's you've got to be really quick to adapt, don't you? I mean, we've seen it with Huey; he's adapted really quickly. Once you get momentum in Hong Kong, it seems from afar you get momentum, and then suddenly you're getting a really good book of rides. So it's a big challenge for Breton. Yeah, he's getting the rights. He's had every opportunity to, but um, he's got to start riding winners. We know that, but he is getting the rides to ride the winners, and the next month is. Uh, D-Day for him because um, with a, no U, with Yui or um, uh, Vincent, he's going to keep getting good rides probably. So he's got to start riding winners. Yeah, big opportunity. Okay, let's talk world racing, global racing. Talk global racing and the whirlpool is uh, just a wonderful success all around the globe. Uh, whatever meetings they're betting into in the whirlpool is certainly growing uh, each and every meeting. And this week we concentrate on the big Caulfield Cup meeting and also with an eye towards uh, Champions Day in uh, at Ascot, of course, on a rain effect to track more on that in a moment. But Hutch. Uh, Three races from uh, Caulfield, the Tristark and the Moonga. Unfortunately, small field in the Moonga, but then we get into the big one, the Caulfield Cup. Yeah, it's, a, it's still quality racing all through the day there is it, at Caulfield, isn't it? So it's, uh, it's going to be a, a brilliant meeting and one of the big days on the, the Australian racing calendar, no doubt about it. So those three races to cover. We start off with the seventh event uh, locally in Australia, but that will be uh, the first event in, uh, in Hong Kong or the Whirlpool, but scratched an intended start recently. Opie Bossom over to ride. Group one performer. Uh, maps pretty well. Not a lot of speed in the race. Can go forward and run very well. Yeah, Skew, if uh, she is a good, she's a, uh, a group one winner in New Zealand. Of course, she has issues uh, jumping when they jump or playing up in the barriers, but uh, I think the barrier blanket will be used to try to settle her down. And uh, I think she will certainly be uh, the starting yeah. position. For mine, Waltz on by, I think might end up being the value. Say Magic, I suppose the question, Hutch, can she run a solid 1,400 metres? It's a big question mark with Say Magic, um, but she'll be popular all the same because she's got some quality about her. I think wrote to Arataki if you're looking to play Cornellas. I think Skew with I think the five wrote to Arataki and Waltz on by. Waltz on by and wrote to Arataki come through that same form reference. Richo and they both were very good at Flemington last time out and if they can hold that sort of form going forward into this race then uh, they won't be far away. 
And then we get to the Moonga Stakes, uh, race number eight, uh, only a small field. Who do you like? Yeah, another, another competitive race, albeit a smaller field. I thought this was one of the better bets on the whole card, actually. I thought that um, Buffalo River, I think he's just a great price. I expect him to roll forward. And they changed the gear with Buffalo River recently. And, you know, it definitely has worked for him. He can get up, he can lead. I think he'll have conditions to suit. They're going to be quite a strong headwind there on uh, the <coughs> weekend. So I'm expecting him to probably take up the lead and, and prove pretty hard to run down. But... Look, in, in early enough markets, he's a, sort of an each-way price around that sort of $6, but hopefully get that on the World Pool in the day because I think he's a really good each-way bet. Yeah, Altivo comes out of the race and saved for a big race in uh, Sydney where he ran a 10, uh, 10 or dollar, $11 chance, so might run really well. Hey, the Caulfield Cup, Shane, w w A, what do you make of the field? And B, take us into this great race. 2,400 metres at Caulfield, you've ridden in uh, many Caulfield Cups. What's the special ingredient? Oh, don't ask me. I didn't win one. Obviously, <laughs> I was getting it wrong. <laughs> it's a... I had two <laughs> seconds beat by a nose, and then yeah. I had a third on tie the knot that was yep. uh, just a runaway for the Melbourne Cup. So, look, I don't know. How would I know? I, I couldn't win the race, and everyone keeps telling me I slaughtered one and should have, so I'm probably not the best one to be asking. <laughs> well, you but got I beaten by uh, the smallest possible margin. I tell you what, you know how to ride 2,400 metres at Caulfield. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> it all depends on the track, whether it's wet or fast, you know, because... It's going to be fast. It's going to be fast. Okay. Then it starts to depend on the wind, whether you need cover down the side. Caulfield was always one track I was very wary of when it was windy there. If you got into the wind, it was so hard and you couldn't win. And I think, Clint, you just said it's going to be windy tomorrow. So that would be in my mind. I think it's a pretty good Caulfield Cup this year. There's there's a few chances and nice chances like uh, West Wing Blows, Gold Trip. Salcom, they've all got chances, Clint. Yep, they've they got good chances. The track might play quite similarly to what it did last week, I think, uh, the Caulfield Guineas meeting, where the wind was coming in from the side. Um, so down the side, sorry, they're copying it, those inside horses, and a headwind in the straight. So it really impacted, I think, the meeting quite significantly. It, not all horses handled it, so it is really important. They're 25 to 35 kilometre an hour wind, so it, it will have a, an impact on that. So you really want horses, I think, that um, I think will probably want to be closer, you know, settle close in the run, and probably that um, a little bit of cover wouldn't go without go with the awry either. Without a fight is my pick. Now, the little caveat with this uh -oh. horse uh -oh. is they had to revet him. <coughs> And yeah. I, I loved his first up run. I think he's good enough to win. But it was a great it was a great resuming performance from him, of course, in the Foundation Cup. But I am a little bit concerned. That said, West Wind Blows number six, I think for your Cornellas, the horse that um, Shane mentioned, Solcom, he's got to be right there as well. And probably the, um, I did chat to Damien Lane regarding breakup and I asked him how the horse had traveled and he said really well, horse feels good. So that's an interesting runner as well. He ran um, fourth in, at Group 1 level in Japan. So to do that is very good. Yeah, he ran fourth in the 10-0 show. So to give you some sort of a form reference, Admire Rakti won the Caulfield Cup after running 12th in the 10-0 show. And you look at recent history, you look at the last decade, the key form reference is either first Australian start or running top three in the Turnbull. And that's what Gold Trip did. And if you have a look at the, the Turnbull performance, um, Romantic Warrior, of course, uh, were, had our interest. But West Wind Blows was there. Look at Sulcum ducking up on the inside. Keep in mind, this is set weights with penalties. Then there's a horse sort of midfield making ground with a star on his cap and dark sleeves. He plummets in the weight. Uh, he's going to be a rough rank outsider. His name is uh, Duke de Sessa. And he might be one of those sneaky ones that can run into a top three or top four in, in a big handicap. Because, Shane, that's the nature of this race. That It's quintessential Australian racing, isn't it? Big fields with a big handicaps. Yes, uh, Gold Trip's got a great chance. He's flying. He seems to go better in Melbourne than Sydney on his form. Um, Richo and Clint, I want to ask you a question. It's a serious question. I've got the utmost respect for her, and I think she's outstanding, Jamie Carr. 
something's not right. She's not riding winners. What is it? And she's got a good ride apparently in the Melbourne in the Caulfield Cup tomorrow. It's gone from twenty dollars into ten. Valiant King, I think she's got gate one. What isn't clicking with her? I don't watch enough races to know. Oh, I think yeah. Shane, after her injury, it's just taking a bit of time for her to come back. Um, you know, she's she's had some good opportunities and she's had some good rides. She's probably uh, hasn't kicked put as many in the back of the net as she normally would. There's no question about that. The record will say that. But probably just getting back to race fitness, Richie. I mean, you've you've had some injuries as well, Shane, in your time, some head injuries. It, yeah, it can take some time, right? I would have thought, actually, Shane, having a conversation with you would be really valuable for someone like Jamie. Um, so I've, I know her really well. I caught up with her in, uh, on the way home from Sydney. Um, she is struggling, A, for a little bit of confidence, but I think she's coming back from that serious brain injury. Um, and you could tell us probably more than any, but other, others have described it as you just have this element of a bit of a, bit of a fog and that things are not happening as sharp as they once were. Was that your understanding? Oh, 100% with me. I come back far too soon. They wanted me to have a year off. I was riding with them four, five, four, three, four months. It was ridiculous when I look back. Um, things, things don't happen as quickly in races. You're a little bit slower um, and you don't respond as quick. Um, but I don't know the extent of her injuries, so it's unfair for me to comment but I haven't yeah. been watching her enough, so I can't comment on her riding because I don't watch the races enough to figure out what she's doing right and what she's doing wrong. But I know before the fall, she was outstanding out of the gates. Horses run for her. She put them in the right spots, and she was outstanding. And she could have been a superstar in Australian racing where she was on every page of the paper every day. At present, that's not happening. No, and yeah, I hope, it, I hope she it, gets back to that change. level because she was yeah. she was exceptional. So let's hope in, in, in the fullness of time, Richard, that she can sort of reach that uh, those levels she was at because she's something special when she was... You know, she's great mm. cl She's great for Australian mm. racing, Clint. Yeah, very, no very doubt. good. And, and very popular in Hong Kong. And uh, we know the Hong Kong Jockey Club are very keen for her to go and do some more riding there. My bank balance uh, would love her to, to win the Caulfield Cup because... Uh, uh, Valiant King has been one of my long-range plays. So oh, she draws an inside barrier, so give her strength. Hey, talking about the world pool and races uh, all around the world, we're also uh, it's Champions Day at Ascot now. From a, um, a a betting point of view, through the world pool, Hutch, the one thing that we really need to consider is the amount of rain they've had in uh, at Ascot and in London means they are actually considering moving parts of this meeting to an inner track because they're concerned about the track. So that would be slightly concerning. But yeah. uh, there's so many features throughout what's going to be a, a wonderful night of racing. So I think those gallopers that can handle uh, rain effect to going is going to be important. Yeah, it is. At this, you often get wet tracks over there this time of year. It's the nature of the beast, I suppose. But it's a great day of racing, isn't it? You know, all the, the who's who turns up. So looking forward to it. It'll be another good meeting to bet on. Yeah, and Mostadaf is a horse that we'll keep our eye on when uh, we get towards um, one of the features in the champion stakes. And you'll get a price if you want to play Mostadaf. He's had a couple of wins in a row, and he's that sort of horse that's uh, constantly underestimated by the market and by the punters. Now, this was a small field, and this was a clinic by Frankie de Tori, but it's the Judmont International at York. It's a quality, uh, a quality race because the horse he's defeating is was spruiked as a big art chance in Paddington. And uh, he won at Royal Ascot as well, Mostadaf. Now, can he handle rain effect a track? Well, that'll be the query. That's why you'll probably get a better price, but that's worth considering. Yeah, uh, you know, Richard, what was interesting about that replay you showed, you know Frankie de Tori put that ride down as one of his top five best ever? Oh, well, it was brilliant mm. because it was a small field and he totally dominated the race from in front. But what he did, Shane, he didn't go too slow. He got it right in regards to leading, but also getting some of the others behind him out of their comfort zone. Yes, he did. He gave it a great ride, rated it very, very, very well. Frankie's riding great. He has for the past year. And now he's off to America to try and conquer them.
Yeah, and be based in Santa Anita, the world's uh, worst kept secret finally uh, comes out there. Uh, Dubai Honour is in the race, so you know if it uh, is significantly uh, wetter, Dubai Honour will come to the fore. Uh, over in Japan, we've seen some uh, incredible racing and uh, Liberty Island continues to, to dominate there. So only the seventh filly to win the filly's triple crown. Um, it's a wonderful performance by her and she's got a special place in the hearts of the uh, Australian audience, of course, because her mum, Yankee Rose, was a quality filly here in Australia. But only the seventh filly to do the Triple Crown, Hutch. She is a superstar. I, I watch her and I'm, I'm, so, I'm proud of, you know, like, I think as an Australian, we're all so happy that, you know, we've bred sort of the, you know, effectively got some, some sort of connection there with her. And I also feel a little bit gutted that we're letting so much of our good bloodstock go as well. But the Japan are reaping the rewards. That's what they've done in recent generations and uh, who knows where the ceiling is with her she just keeps winning yeah gentle donna and arm and i are just a couple of the fillies that have got that triple crown and there's also that australian breeding uh, scenario you've just touched on uh, of course akita sushi runs in the caulfield cup by galileo out of amicus who won a thousand guineas so uh, even though uh, bred in ireland comes back to australia to have a tackle of the caulfield cup uh, enough from me let's get into some serious star power Our star power guest is a bona fide world star winning Group 1 races across seven different countries. He's calling Hong Kong home again, Andrea Atzani joins us now. Andrea, how are you uh, settling back into Hong Kong and enjoying being back in the jurisdiction? Yeah, good morning to you guys and th thanks for having me this morning. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm settling quite well actually. Um, I've been here, I think about six weeks now. So, um, you know, I had to get over the jet lag first, which it took a bit of time and a couple of typhoons and uh, and uh, you know the weather hasn't been great but uh no so far so good and has it changed yeah, much since weather. you were last there um i wouldn't say it's changed much um you know it's the place is obviously very similar uh well, well, same as it was before and uh, obviously you haven't got the likes of douglas white riding anymore or john morrer is not here um brett preble those were the guys that were riding when i first came here nine years ago uh, there's a lot of new, uh, young faces in the, in the jockey's room. And, uh, yeah, that's the only uh, different side of it, this sort of uh, fresh uh, faces in, and it, uh, it, around now. Andre, it's been a good week for you. Um, you've had three winners in the past week, so you must be happy with the way things are picking up. But very happy, very happy. Do you know what? It's, um, when, I, when I first arrived, and it, it, it's very hard to um, know what could happen. I didn't know how much support I was going to get. Um, you know, Randy had a lot of luck with your draws and the right horse at the right time. And I know jockeys that took three to four months, even longer, to ride a first winner. And uh, I was very lucky to ride my first winner on Mega Bonus at, at um, my second meeting riding. And then I had another winner the following week and uh, I had a nice double on, on Sunday and uh, another winner Happy Valley on, on Wednesday. So uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't ask for a better start. I just hope it keeps going. Andre, what was the, I mean, a lot of riders want to come to Hong Kong, of course, There's, it's attractive, particularly if you can do well, but, you know, what was the, the main attraction for, from your point of view? To be quite honest with you, the prize money is massive. Um, you know, you race for uh, big money. And um, also, I came to a stage of my career where I was a, a retained rider for nine years. Um, I was always backed up with a, a big stable or a big owner. So I sort of, um, that sort of ended back end last year. And so I started fresh this year in England as a freelance jockey, which I was really looking forward to. And uh, my plan, Hong Kong wasn't in my mind yet anyway. Um, I did think at some stage I was going to try to apply to come back here, but I wasn't thinking about doing it right now. And... Uh, because I was going to give England a bit of a go uh, as a freelance jockey. I was going to try to work as hard as I could and trying to ride as many winners as I can. And uh, But yeah, the phone call came um, in the summer from the Hong Kong Jockey Club and uh, they approached me. And uh, at the time, obviously, I didn't know what to do because, you know, it's, it's, it's life-changing. 
obviously, you know, live, private life, and also obviously your career. So I had to think about it very carefully. And I came to a conclusion where I'm at that stage of my career where I probably just needed a new challenge. And uh, so, yeah, so far so good. What's the best horse that uh, you've ever ridden in all of the uh, your wonderful career? Is there one that stands out? I'll have to say Postpone. Uh, Postpone, he, he was a champion. He, he was a, I'd say as a five-year-old, he was probably the best middle, middle distant horse. He was definitely the best middle distant horse in Europe. But, you know, he could have been one of the best horses around the world on over a mile and a half on turf. He was he won five group ones and uh, he was definitely the best horse I've ridden. Yeah, he was absolutely brilliant, Shane, uh, wasn't he? Hey, no surprise at Andrea. Uh, it's something that you've been speaking about a lot, Shane, about the, the enticing prize money that Hong Kong has is just so hard to refuse for the gun jockeys. Well, it's not actually the it prize is. money. It's, it's, it's the 10%. Jockeys get 10% and there's no tax, and it's just huge. I know the prize money's great. Prize money's great in Australia too, but you're paying five. You're getting 5% and you're paying 48% tax. Hong Kong, you get away with, I think, about 10% tax. So it's just so good there. People don't realise how good it is for a jockey. Is, is your family with you? Because that's very important, the family, if they're happy. Uh, I couldn't agree with what you just said uh, regarding the you know, obviously the tax situation and that. Like you said, the price money is big in Australia is very big. Japan is massive, but then you come to a stage where, you, like you said, you get five percent instead of ten, and also the tax situation is very high, also in Europe too. Whether here it's it's a lot smaller than somewhere else. But yeah, uh, going back to your question, uh, I'm just here with my uh, my girlfriend, uh, just house two, which which I'm very lucky that uh, she she followed me and. Uh, you know, it can be a quite lonely place, so I'm very lucky to have her here. So looking at some of that vision, Andrea, of uh, you riding recently, by gee, it looked wet on uh, Wednesday night. What was it like to ride there? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I'm quite lucky because I'm quite used to it. I've been riding in England for the last 15 years. It was, it was <laughs> me. And uh, listen, I must say it wasn't enjoyable, but it's, listen, like I said, I'm, I'm quite used to it. Andre, targets this year, what, what, how many winners do you want to ride? Do you know what? I've not set myself um, any targets really like a number because, it's like I said earlier, it's, it's difficult. You, you just don't know what. I've had a great start with five winners and... I hope it continues. I'm sure it will continue because I'm getting some very good good support. And my target is to ride as well as I can, um, try to keep my weight down, which that's another good thing about me. I can do I can do 115, which is bottom weight here. Uh, trying to keep clean and stay away from the steward's room and keep the trainers and owners happy. And all I can do is work hard and do my best. And uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't just give you a number or many yeah. minutes I want to ride. One thing I would like to... It'd be nice to land on a, on a good horse. Andreas, the next five or six weeks is important for you because there's no Yui, there's no Vincent, so there's a gap. you got Zach and a gap, and there's going to be a lot of good rides, and someone's going to pick them up, and there's every chance you could. Yeah, listen, we, you know what it's like here. It's, you've got to be very sharp. You've got to be on the ball. Um, you know, someone else's, someone else's you know, fortune could be work on, on someone else's fortune. So... Like I said, obviously, unfortunately, Yu Bowman is, is is out. I think for 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 five meetings, and uh, and also Vincent. Unfortunately, I think he got it reduced to eight meetings. Um, so yeah, hopefully, I'll be able to pick up some some something um, that, which I think I already have. So now I'm sure we. Uh, I've got a guy called Roy that's actually at the moment is helping me with my rides too, uh, which the club provided me for the first three months. So we're on the pole and we're working together and we make sure we don't we don't leave anything behind. Andre, you got a couple of good rides this weekend. I think you can add to your tally. Um, one of the, I think Champion Method looks like uh, one runner that has a, a very good chance. And Aestheticism is, is the other one. Races three and four in particular, and a, not a bad value chance, probably with Murado. What can you tell us about Champion Method? He actually, I rode him yesterday. He's... Um very straightforward horse. He obviously run once here over a thousand meters, and and he, he won quite nicely. He's, he's stepping up to twelve hundred on on Sunday, which that won't be an issue. The only thing uh, this time, we, I'm drawing a little bit wide. Um, so, but um, it, it could still be well handicapped. And uh, like I said, he's a very lightly raced horse, and uh, 
and uh, yeah, no, it was actually a nice ride to get really uh, from for, for Danny because he, you know, he's, he's been actually supporting me quite nicely. And it was nice to get a winner for him. With that horse, how come you're on him and Zach hasn't got a ride on him and he won on him first up? Do you know what happened there? Just for the viewers, I, I, I think Zach was um, booked to ride something else uh, in the race a little while back, and I, that's what I gathered. That I think Zach's horse ended up not running. And uh, that's all. I, I, and then obviously Zach uh, committed to another horse, so I ended up taking the ride. And then I think Zach horse ended up not running. But uh, fair play to Danny to 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 keep me on the horse because he could have easily emailed the owners, uh, put Zach back on it because he did win on the horse. Um, and Pierre Rung's going really well, Andreas. So nice to pick up some rides from him. You didn't ride aestheticism last start. Vincent Ho was on board him, but it was a it was a nice run. What did you think of it? Yeah. Actually, going back to hip hop, that's, this is probably a ride that I got uh, through. Um, obviously, unfortunately, Vince came suspended, but uh, he, he his comeback round was a good run. He was second last time. It's uh, it's on a handy mark, and uh, yeah, on the back of his last run, he should be very competitive. I thought. Well, that's good. So, what 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 did you think your best ride was on the weekend? Um, obviously, Champion Method. I think he's. I could have probably done with a better draw, uh, but like I said, he, he ran once and he won once. And like I said, they're stepping up to 1,200 metres and I think will really suit him. And I actually got a, um, a new horse uh, that runs in the, in the last race. It's called Moment in Time for, uh, for Danny Shum as well. He's, um, he hasn't run it yet. Uh, he's, he's done some really good trials. Um, he's, uh, he's running over 1,400 metres on Sunday. He's a horse that will end up staying a little bit further. But we've got a good draw in one. It probably just might just need a run, but it's a horse I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, I tried him a few times, and uh, he's, he's showing the right signs. Andrea sounds magnificent. Uh, a big day coming up on uh, Sunday. Wonderful to have you in Hong Kong. We're really enjoying the way you're riding. Thanks so much for your time today and being our star power guest, and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, good luck, Fantastic mate. to have uh, Andrea at Sandy. Let's find some winners at Chartu. Let's find some winners at Chartin. Hutch, start with race number seven. Who do you like? The Premier Bowl. It's a ripper, actually, and it's a, a rematch, isn't it, of Lucky Swayness and Victor the winner. Um, look, I'm going with Lucky Swayness to, to get back in the winner's stall. I think he gets the right run this time. Victor the winner will be there for a long way, and he meets on similar terms, and then site success has got to be in the mix once again, but it's ultimately a match race. Look, this day, Victor the winner got away with a very cheap lead, Shane. I don't think that'll happen this time. I think there's actually a little bit of pressure, and Lucky Swayness camps on the back of him, and it might be a, a return run of what they faced at the end of last season when Lucky Swayness was victorious. Yeah, I think Lucky Snurse will win. Zach gave him a perfect ride that day for him for the future. Um, I loved his ride. Tomorrow's a bit different. He's got an awkward gait, Lucky Snurse, because he'll jump and go forward. Zach will put a little bit of pressure and he'll make the other horse work and then he'll probably cross him, Victor the winner, unless Lucky Snurse doesn't jump well, which he sometimes can do. But I've got definitely Lucky Snurse on top tomorrow. He meets him three pounds better at the weights, which isn't much. Um but they stand out in the race, those two. The way I read it, like Stoltz kicks through, Victor the winner. I think it's actually a perfect draw for Lucky Swainess because he can let yeah. the speed go and then he's sort of, he's drawn a bit wider where he's not going to be locked away. So it gives Zach an opportunity just to track the speed. And I think he ends up 1-1. He's going to sit behind Sight Success um, and Victor the winner or maybe Stoltz. Hope that they overdo a little bit and camp on the back. And on a firmer track today, let's hope we don't get the rain on a firmer track. I think he'll just, uh, the, the cream will rise to the top and uh, he'll bounce back, Richo. Yeah, and also, Hutch, I think it's really important for Lucky Sway and S building towards the international meeting. We want one of the headline acts in really good form, don't we? Just to say yeah. to any of the international sprinters that uh, want to take him on, hey, I'm here and I'm ready. There was nothing wrong with his run last start, as Shane pointed out in the day. I mean, it was over after 100 metres. They, 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 a lot of rain. They crawled the first bit. He just sat a bit too far back, but it wasn't a gut-busting type of run. He ran home in 21.6 still. Like, he's, yeah. he's, he's reeled off some good sectionals, but uh, he'll be back on the weekend. 
We go to 1,400 metres for race number eight. Uh, Hutch, it's simple. Who do you like? Yeah, I like this race, and I'm pretty keen on one here too. And it, uh, once again, it's with Zach. He's picked up this ride. One would imagine in the absence of Vincent Ho, who's been the regular pilot on Golden Samurai. Rises in great. I've got him marked about a $3 favourite. Just note with these early rated prices, once, the, once, the mark, once there's some liquidity in the tote as well, I will um, adjust my prices accordingly if there's a couple that I've underestimated or overestimated. Murado, Chicha Spirit, they're in the game. Murado ridden by Andrea. But I love the recent trial from Golden Samurai. And one thing he did, Shane, Golden Samurai last season, is he just kept improving and getting better and better. Once again, I like the wide draw. Yeah, well, he's had two 1,200-metre trials back this time and uh, performed well both times. There's one in that race that will definitely go better than last start, number three, Hyper Dragon Ball. Um, he got back the other day, was wide, and he hung in bad in the straight, and he got beat easy. But his first up run was good, and from gate one, he can definitely go better, that horse, Clint. But I I'd agree with you. I don't think it's a strong race, and I think that Golden um, Samurai, if he reproduces form from last year, and his trials suggest he will, he's going to be very hard to beat. Andre's got a good chance on Murado. That horse comes out of a good form reference behind Yellowfin. That, that run rated well, and he'll give a good account. He'll be a little bit fitter. But, Shane, I wanted to ask you about another horse. There's been a stable change with Choo Chow Spirit. Um, is he a thinker? He's loomed to win a few races. Do we give him another chance? He's drawn to get a soft run. He's been gelded. He's better. He's a bit like that beauty charge. See, the other day they had him running fifth or sixth with um, Matthew Chadwick. Every chance, he was three back the fence, come out to win, didn't quicken. He had to be four or five lengths further back, that horse. This horse is very similar to that. If they ride him up there, he won't hit the line. He's got to go back. But he'll be forward probably from the gate. The thing with him is he is gelded. That might help him. Um, I wasn't overly impressed as at the trials. His trials were okay, but they weren't nothing uh, special. But he has shown ability, Clint, and it wouldn't be a surprise if he's ridden off the pace he hits the line. Yeah, no, I think he gets a nice soft run from there, Richo. So he might be one to include in the Quinellas. And any sort of data we can get from G1 Goldmine uh, throughout the meeting, which will be important, Hutch? Yeah, well, there is. Um, look, there's a horse called Absolute Sunshine, who is a debutante. We like to do a distance profile, of course. This is suggesting that uh, that sort of 1,600 metres is probably the sweet spot. So kicking off over 1,400 metres is a, a sour move. But, uh, yeah, it's one of the things that you can use Group 1 Goldmine for in terms of some of these imports. This horse raced in Australia. He won over 1,200. He also won over 1,400. I think he'll be a mile or plus. I like in his recent trials, Shane, he, he just looked to me to be a little bit more dour. So he would have been bored, I presume, with the uh, potential of the derby in mind, and uh, he might be one to keep an eye on for later. He ran fourth in the Sandown Guineas, I think, Clint, yeah. so, um, which isn't bad form normally for there. And I think he won two of his four runs in the country in Melbourne. So his trials have been OK. Um, his last trial was no his first trial he stopped pushed out just having a look here now his last one wasn't too bad but the first one was disappointing um, so you know he's still got to improve yeah, and by Toast and Stardom, we've seen the to the uh, progeny of Toast and Stardom, certainly a mile and uh, and a mile plus can, uh, as a young horse, uh, certainly can be a factor. Let's move to race number nine, uh, Hutch, and this is over 1,800 metres. I'm really excited to see this horse back. Um, now, we, we mentioned, I think, in previous shows about how strong the derby form is, and Sword Point comes out of that derby. I've got him on top here. I, look, I'm going to have him a clear favourite. Um, I haven't sort of settled on a price per se. I, I think around that $3 mark. But 5G patch, Hugh Bowman will ride. Uh, we've got Butterfield in the race as well. What's interesting about this horse is Sword Point. Um, he meet, a lot of horses, Shane, meet him considerably better at the weights. You know, there's massive weight swings with some of these horses. I won't go through them all, but a number of them could turn the tables. But his trials have been extremely impressive. And I don't know, the way he's going, he might take that next step. He, he kind of looks like a, a genuine Group 1 horse from what I'm seeing at the trials. Yeah, he's he has been impressive. The weight's a worry to me, but I wouldn't be surprised if he won like his trials. He's going to get a good run. One there, Clint, that could be odds is Champion Dragon. He's got no weight on his back. He's got gate nine he's going to lead, you would think. Now, the thing with him is his last two seasons, first up, he's gone extremely well. 
if he can reproduce that, he'll give us sight with no weight on his back if he leads. But uh, I don't think it's an easy race. There's, a, you know, when you've got a horse with 135 pounds having his first up run, but you know he's got the ability, it's not going to be a surprise if he won or run third or fourth. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, exactly. And we're talking of horses, well, I think there's a three kilo swing in favour of Champion Dragon, which yeah, which um, which might help him along the way from the last time they clash. It's a really, com in some respects, it's very competitive. I mean, you've got horses like Helene Feeling that are up in class. Meaningful Stars, another one that meets him considerably better at the weights, rising for Nash's hammer on. They're all in winning form. So it's there's a bit of depth to the lineup. So if he wins it, it bodes well for short sword point season, that's for sure. All right, Hutch, uh, hopefully race 10 is a lucky uh, finish in style. <laughs> yeah, I think we can finish in style. And we always needed a bit of luck, Richo, that is for sure. I'm keen on Supreme Lucky. Um, look, he ran against da Dancing Code last season, wherein our subs were on Dancing Code, who be did beat him home that day. But... He was given, um, well, he settled a long way back on that occasion, and I think he'll be more positive from a, a wide draw this time. And I think those two stand out. Alacrity was a bit unlucky first up. The Golden Scenery is racing well. But um, look, Supreme Lucky Shane, he's a nice horse. He won well. Zach led on him last start. He's not on board him here. It's a pickup ride, I think, for Lyle Hewitson, isn't he? But he looks a good chance. He won't be leading here. Master 8, you'd think, would be leading unless they say he can't run 40, 1,400 metres. We've got to take a sit on him. You missed one there, Clint. Find my love in the market. I thought he'd be a lot shorter than that. Mm. Um, he's racing very well, and if they're coming from back a bit and wide, he's definitely got a chance. He's done nothing wrong, find my love, but I'm not disagreeing with you and Supreme Lucky and um, Dancing Code. Young horses on the way up. Both of them should be forward a bit, and um, they're both going to run well. Yeah, I mean, find my love. He did start favourite last time, Shane, so I probably should have shown him a little more respect. That was a, a little bit of a tricky map. He's tactically versatile. I think they'll go back. He'll run well, but I, I thought they'd be positive without leading on Supreme Lucky, and he'd go well in dancing code, look the <coughs> danger. They're both up in class but drop a lot in weight. So, Rich, hope, hopefully we can finish in style and have that little bit of Supreme Lucky that we need. Your very best for the weekend, both of you. Hutch, let's start with you. Yeah, I, I like uh, the chances of Golden Samuel. I think he's really got a good opportunity there. The, the pre-season trial was certainly worth noting, and I thought there was a Quinella in the race that we could take. I've got Chew Chow Spirit in it uh, with Morado and also the nine, which is massive action. He looks your leader. So I'll be having a win bet on Golden Samurai. There's the Quinellas. Outside of that, at the meeting, Race 10, number 10, Supreme Lucky, pretty keen on him. I think he'll be back up a lot because Dancing Code, amongst others, are all going to be in the market. And then earlier on the card, a horse that's had one run for David Hayes. It was called Ruby Lot. Race 3, number 4. Debut was good. Race rated pretty well. And I think with that natural improvement, Ruby Lot can uh, go one better and win at his second career start. Shane, what do you like? I'll go the Class 5, Race 1, Zach on Prosecco. Is that how you call him? Prosecco. 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 That's what... He's got, that... he's got gate four. He's going to get a good run. He drops back in distance from a mile to 1,400, but the main thing is the class drop. He won't be far away. He's racing well, and mate, he gets his no, chance. No mate. surprise you can't pronounce that because you wouldn't drink Prosecco, mate. You'd only drink French champagne, my friend. Since my fall, I'm hopeless with remembering names, pronouncing them, but I don't care because I'm alive. Boys, great show. Andrea Ratzeni was fantastic. Hopefully we found a, a stack of winners. Hutch, I look forward to sitting alongside you next week with uh, uh, the golden boy up in the penthouse and looking forward to another week of uh, racing. So good luck, team, and well played, Hutch. Yeah, no, well done. Good luck on the weekend and Caulfield Cup, so world pool racing as well, of course, with champions meeting in England. It's a, it's a festival of racing, Richo. Yeah, that's right. And if you're new to the Caulfield Cup uh, as a Whirlpool customer, just jump online, look at some old uh, Caulfield Cups and you'll see the glamour boy Shane Dye in action. Shane, great show, mate. Oh, what can I say, Richo? Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. And, hey, hey, and I hey, did hey. say you were smarter than I realised before. I gave you a compliment. Yeah. Mate, don't, don't you worry about that. We've got that on loop and I'm going to make it as my uh, screensaver and yep. also my answering uh, message on my phone. It's yeah. a gif already. It's already out there. Well played. Oh, you've made my life. Uh, thanks for watching the Triple Chat.